matter how over we are in the world, can understand a heart. In fact, friends, it's a heart that greets you as you come into this fellowship's uh, double doors, right? Yeah. Yeah, and what is that? Side with love? Well, I'm down with love. But the heart, the heart carries the day. And so I've curated images that I, I think celebrate uh, the heart. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And so um, I would uh, ask you to consider uh, little hearts. Is it possible to, to dim the light so that the, the screen might be a, a bit richer, a little more vivid? I'm such a demanding person. <laughs> well, there's a lot of hearts. I know, I might say good, good night to some of you, but <laughs> we promise to wait. Now, these are hearts that I'm sure we're all well acquainted with. These are the hearts of our youth. These chalky little delights that um, our parents would likely uh, purchase in a drugstore uh, with these little communications on these. By show of hands, who's familiar? Who's seen these more than once? Who's eaten more than your fair share of these? So we're literally consuming the heart in a certain sense here. Uh, the heart's delight here. The ubiquitous heart, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Let's see if the, the clicker works here. I know Tom has been... Um, Practicing with it. Whoops. Oh, it, it totally works. Wonderful. Now, there's a heart. Now, this is different than the chalky little heart that we might get in the sweetheart box here. This was commissioned by Tyrone Power, who uh, Tom reminded me was a heartthrob himself. But I'll bump. As a Christmas gift for his wife. Now, that's a very, very special heart. That's a heart that's uh, encrusted with very, very valuable jewels. And so there, there's something about uh, the heart that it could be understood as a chalky little sweet or something as permanent as a diamond. Let's see. Now, the same company uh, is still looking at hearts. Uh, it's evolving its understanding of hearts. And uh, for only $175,000, you too might purchase this heart. Now, the last time I priced little sweethearts, that was less than $2. Uh, uh, and so a heart is a heart uh, is a heart. Uh, the idea here is that we don't tire of imagining how to present a heart uh, into the world. Now, this is a heart that perhaps, this is completely iconic here. The work of Milton uh, Glazer, who only died just a few years ago, uh, by a show of hands who's seen this before. And we have seen it reinterpreted over and over and over again. I'm almost incredulous that it took up until 1977 to come up with this. Does, don't you feel like this might have been uh, celebrated earlier here? Uh, but what's so amazing about this, it's not only how New Yorkers are, are proud of here, but how easily adaptable it is. We could change that in a heartbeat to I heart you, you, right? And so this is something that's within reach for all of us. And I think nothing would delight Milton more if we were to, uh, to appropriate that. Now that is the origin. Here's the little bit of art history for you. How did this come about? He's in the back seat of a taxi, and he has this thought, and all he has is an envelope, and he sketches this out. And so this is the very humble origin of this iconic image here. And so sometimes, friends, you need that piece of paper and pencil by the bedside because you don't know when you will be inspired. Now, Corita Kent, who spent 20 years as a Roman Catholic nun, uh, who really uh, was toe-to-toe -to -toe with Andy Warhol, they're both creating, they're both silk screening at the same time, uh, she came up with this. Nothing could be more zen. Nothing could be more simple. Nothing could be more powerful than this. So this is Carita's work uh, long after she left the convent. Uh, love. She knows that we never tire of this in all its iterations. And so uh, once more, how we're inspired, uh, how we continue to put forth that message in a heart. Uh, this is auctioned off tomorrow, by the way, so uh, if... if uh, your news feed may re, uh, reveal something here. This is a valentine that Andy Warhol gave to Andre uh, Leon Talley, who was an editor of Vogue magazine. Uh, he recently died. 
and his estate uh, put this forward. And again, uh, look at the inspiration, that chalky little heart. And so here, uh, Andy dresses it up a little bit here. Uh, this will go, I, I bet, way over a million dollars. Now there's a heart we can all be on, on, on board with here. This is the work of a graffiti artist. He would tag in the New York subway. He's a Midwesterner, uh, Keith Herring. And he distilled uh, th this notion of the accessibility of the heart in the same way that Glazer and Kent did, uh, making it charming. And this uh, defies race, sex, and gender, and age, doesn't it? This is so radically inclusive. I find this to be incredibly sophisticated uh, and, and, and so elegant. Uh, there's a playfulness about this, which I, I, I think is quite fine. Uh, but look, with just a few little lines here, how we can uh, express power and joy. Uh, this, is, this is quite remarkable. I never tire of his work. So Keith Haring, uh, born in 1959 in Pennsylvania, I said Midwest, Pennsylvania, my, my mistake. Untitled, again, that's so generous, because the minute you title something, you put parameters around it, right? We cease to dream. We're told exactly how to think about it. Untitled, now that could be beguiling, because sometimes we like to be told what something is. Here, he's saying, you have a mind, you have a heart, figure it out for yourself. What title ought it be for you right now? Now, the backstory here, he's an out and proud gay man who ultimately dies of AIDS. Now, this can be sometimes a surprise for people who might be concerned uh, about such things here because they're, they're smitten at once by what he's created. And so he's somebody, I, I think, worthy of our attention here, uh, that we all have a heart, that we all want to love, you know, and, and why would anyone discriminate against such a natural orientation as wishing to love and spreading love, uh, and so delightfully so. In Chicago, you'll find his work at Rush Presbyterian St. Luke Hospital, two amazing uh, murals, figures like this, with hearts. Think about that in a hospital setting where there's fear and anxiety, anxiousness, there to delight you, there to give you hope. There to say trust in the heart. Well, Banksy, of course, uh, we don't even know who he is. We don't know his real name. We think he's from Bristol. We don't know his age. Some people want to claim that they do. This is an international artist of mystery. And he tags places, and it's always a sensation. And these are always uh, auctioned off for astronomical uh, amounts of money. But here we see in Waterloo Bridge in London uh, a young girl with a heart balloon. But she's lost the string. Uh, the, the heart is flowing away here. What could this possibly mean? Banksy does not tell us. He relies on you to complete the story. How many times have we lost our heart or the heart of another? A child losing a heart, what could that mean? A parent, a friend, a sibling, a pet? There's this whole notion here. People can relate to this without any verbiage. And what I love about this, it's not at all elitist. It's out where the people are friends. It's not at some Tony gallery or at Christie's at an auction house. This is for one and for all. I mean, this is stunningly democratic, but it's amazingly generous. Finding art in the public in the way that this fellowship uh, presents its heart to the public outside. It's one thing to have it on the wall inside, it's another to be so bold to place it outside. Now, uh, this is a little print based on that original uh, stencil on the wall here that sold for $468,355.23. I barely have 23 cents <laughs> to my name. This is a piece of paper, friends, just like this, and there are many, many, many of them. Such is the regard for Banksy, but such is the regard, too, for the motif, for the idea, for the thought here. And so this becomes an aid to our memory here of love that maybe we've lost. Well, you're back. Say again. Uh-oh. <laughs> now, 
there's 150 of these. I, you know, I don't like math, but what's 150 times, let's round it up to $500,000. Yeah, I think Banksy is doing fine. He's going to the bank, our Banksy. <laughs> Oops. Are we able to advance? Here we go. Now, here again, we see that the, same, the exact same image. So clearly, we don't tire. Mm -hmm. of yeah. Is he bored? Oh, we've seen this already. No, this is so strong, friends, uh, that it's brought forward again at auction. Now, this was sold at Christie's Auction House. Very, very big deal for over a million dollars a few years ago. Little piece of paper with an image that's easily recognizable. And if we could just go back, oops. Yeah, can we go back just for one? All right, that sold for only like half a million. And could we shoot forward again, please? There's over a million. Is that for the frame? <laughs> right? Is that a $500,000 frame that we see here? Well, if uh, let me see if I can go forward here. Here. There it is at auction. It's just sold for $1,000. The minute the hammer goes down, it self-destructs. This is like Mission Impossible. Remember when Jim Phelps would get the message, and then you know this will self-destruct in five seconds, and then shh, there it goes. Same sort of thing going on here. Look at the auctioneers, they're aghast. They didn't see this coming. Oh, that Banksy is a clever one, isn't he? Right? Has this been ruined, or has just this uh, gained uh, or appreciated in value beyond belief? How outrageous. And there it is. You got two beefy guards there guarding this. All right. Now, this is going to go up for auction. It just sold for over a million. And the owner said, well, let, let's, let's resell it. And Banksy goes, you resell it, but we're going to call it something else in the bin, in the garbage. Yeah, right? And so let's see the next, please. And there it is. And one more. Love in the bin, 2018, the exact same thing that it was before it was uh, torn. Uh, there's a device inside there with razors that allowed it to be cut. And there you get a sense for the scale. And next, please. Yeah, so it sold, as I said, for a million dollars in 2018. Then, after it was sliced and diced, next, please. Pre-shredded price, 25 million. $400,000 for the outrage of this. Uh, next, please. So the shredded version. Are we fools? What is going on? Now, another uh, contemporary artist who delights in the heart is Jeff Koons. Uh, uh, here's another Pennsylvanian from around the same time. Hanging heart. This is a nine foot tall. This, is, this would not fit in the fellowship's room. It's so huge here. 3,500 pounds. That is a large heart. Now, it's glitzy and it's celebratory, and you can't miss it. Where would you put it? It's obviously made for a large public space, uh, in a sense, or a museum. Now, what's curious about this heart that we haven't noticed in the other hearts? You can see yourself. You see yourself in this heart. And oftentimes, if you're gazing upon this in a gallery, uh, as you might with the famous uh, Anish Kapoor cloud gate, or it's called the Bean in Chicago, there's lots of other people with you. Hmm, it is no longer a private experience. You, this heart embraces all of us. And so there we are. It's just not me in the mirror, it's us within the heart. That, as a concept, is radically inclusive. Because how do I know who else is in this image with me? Who else is in this heart? This is really curious. And I think it appeals then to a, a radical sense of inclusivity and oneness that only the heart can understand. Next, please. Well, if it works red, it's going to work as magenta. And so, again, this is marketing genius. He gives us lots of different color choices because some of us maybe don't like our hearts red. We like them magenta. Or perhaps we like them gold. Or maybe we prefer our hearts to be blue. And so, uh, ever the capitalist here. Now, this only sold for $23,600,000. Oh, I know. Now, think what that could do you know, for a school system or for a hospital 
or a research center or a shelter, things like this. And so that sometimes is what's most perplexing to me uh, about art and the joy that it brings. Where in the great scheme are $23 million go, right? I mean, there's, there's a great idea here, but there's the practicality uh, about love that we want to consider, our, uh, consider as well. Next, please. Now, here we see a golden magenta, same, same idea, uh, essentially the same heart, just a, a different color. This is at the Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art in Bentonville, Arkansas. You know who owns that, right? Alice Walton? Yeah, who owns Walmart? So your toilet paper, you probably, no, you probably shop there. But toilet paper, you know, helps fund this, you know, discounted uh, boxes and boxes of this. Uh, and, and there it is. And so this then gets the stamp of approval. Next, please. This is the work of Tracy Emmett. Her work is extremely controversial. Uh, but she started working in neon and, again, uh, saying that the heart is relevant. This is what I think is so curious about all these contemporary artists. It's no longer thought to be something kitschy. This is something that we need to think deeply about. And we have to remind ourselves over and over and over again, we ought not ever tire of the human heart. The kiss was beautiful. Next, please. Now, this is very, very interesting here. This is a national COVID memorial wall. It began in April 2021. What it was was a wall in April 20, uh, or, uh, uh, in what comes before April? March. March. In March 2021, it was just a wall. Then all of a sudden, it becomes a memorial wall. Now, this is a hospital behind it. This is St. Thomas's Hospital in London. You see this wall? This wall is being addressed in the same way uh, that Banksy and Herring addressed walls and subways. But the people are doing this. Uh, next, please. The people are drawing hearts. Each heart represents a loved one lost to COVID. This helps put this in perspective, friends. And I think this is very, very powerful, allowing the people then to be co-creators uh, in, in a mural of great significance. And uh, it's an overwhelming uh, sight to see. I have not seen it in, in person, uh, but I've known people who have died as a result of COVID. And perhaps their hearts need to be placed upon there uh, by those who remember them. Uh, it also begs the question, who's an artist? Yes, right? We all are. And perhaps we're responsible uh, to be artists at moments like this, now more than ever. Next, please. Right. Is, isn't that stunning? Isn't that powerful? Isn't that eloquent? Without words, we understand this. The pathos of this, the gravitas of this, but the hope. Because that symbol of a heart is steeped in hope. There's a happiness to this, even as it evokes a, a tragic loss. And that's the inherent ambiguity of a good symbol. It's going to uh, allow us to address all the emotions and not just one. A sign only allows us one thought. A symbol, many thoughts. And so symbols are what um, I recommend people pursue. Next. This woman lost both her parents to COVID-19 within one week of each other. And so she's compelled. Thank goodness uh, the wall allows her that moment to express both her love for her parents and that monumental loss. And so art can be uh, as therapeutic and cathartic as it can be delightful and full of joy. The richness uh, of the heart. Next, please. In the same way, if you were to go to Paris, to Père Lachaise Cemetery, and visit the tomb of Oscar Wilde, <laughs> women for decades have been putting on, well, now everybody, has been putting on lipstick and giving a little kiss here. Uh, a, a kiss is sort of like a heart, in a way, right? Now, uh, the cemetery got so concerned about so many kisses uh, on this, they put a plexiglass fence around Oscar Wilde. You all know Oscar Wilde is gay, right? 
and you know, there's these untold women there, baby, I love you. <laughs> I mean, and so there's just something so remarkable about this here, that they have a plexiglass border around the tomb here. Is that stopping anybody? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> you know, frustrating the cemetery to no end. Uh, but the heart wants what the heart wants. <laughs> and I think Oscar Wilde is just, just loving every minute of this. Bring it on, friends. Next. Now, uh, you all know, uh, once again, uh, another horrible mass shooting in the United States of America. It's every few days we get news of this. And just weeks ago, the Star Room, the Star Ballroom Dance Studio. Everything about that title sounds like joy. The Star Ballroom Dance Studio. There was a mindless slaughter there. Now, look what happens. Little memorials arrive, little altars, uh, little um, sculptural tableaus are created. And what do we see? Do you see the heart? We need the heart. We need the heart when we have no more words to express our outrage, our sense of defeat, our anxiety, our concern, our righteous anger, our profound loss. The heart seems to encapsulate this, as do light, as do flowers. But what I love about this, this is no famous artist gleaning money from this. This is the people expressing um, their brokenness. But yet, I have to believe their hope, because that is an awfully uh, sunny-looking image there, the notion of this floating heart. Next, please. And one more. Thank you. And we'll see it over and over again, all around. Same town, but a different area. That's City Hall. Yet the heart is there. Next, please. The very place where this young man was, was so horribly beaten, in public, within earshot of his mother's home, we see this makeshift memorial, which says something about what the heart compels us to do. When we don't know what else to do, we create these little monuments, these memorials, these altars, whatever one wants to call them. Uh, but look at the number of hearts that are placed there. It almost defies reason. But we have an irresistible urge to never give up on the heart. What did Blaise Pascal say uh, in the 17th century? The heart has its reasons, which reason does not know. There's a truism. As we look at Tyre Nichols' makeshift memorial, I think of the prophet Jeremiah, who around the year 650 before the Common Era said this, more torturous than anything else is the human heart. Beyond remedy, who can understand it? This is an echo of the prophet Jeremiah in so many ways. Next, please. And how this expands out someone's, outside somebody's home, right? And I think of the home order that permits this, that allows this makeshift memorial to grow there. Uh, how, how essential, how healing. Next, please. And then the prayer that takes place there. And again, not unlike Banksy, with the little child and the balloon, we see one praying at this site with the balloon, with the heart. There's something about the connections here, friends. Uh, you know, connecting the dots, something we all did as children that we love to try to figure something out. To see a bigger picture, we have to connect the dots. Uh, this, to me, uh, was a curation of trying to connect dots in the world today in advance of Tuesday on Valentine's Day. Next, please. Yes, this might uh, feel familiar to those of you who might be uh, uh, cogent in, uh, or, and aware of sacred scripture. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth. Next, please. 
where moth and decay destroy. Next. And thieves break in and steal. But store up treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor decay destroys, nor thieves break in and steal. For where your treasure is, don't go yet. Oh, that's okay. How many, how many of you could have completed it? There also will your heart be. You need not be a scripture scholar to know that. That has uh, entered in to uh, the human heart. That's truth. And it's in red, so it's on the quiz tomorrow, so make sure that you memorize this. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. That's over 2,000 years old. And it's as relevant today as it was in the year 80. Next, please. I would like to illustrate that with a very contemporary uh, moment. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. So hearts being the motif, the idea, the thought uh, for this, this short uh, uh, gathering uh, with us today. So this comes from the Gospel of St. Luke. Uh, P.S., if you're interested in biblical literature at all, this gospel is the most friendly towards women, where women have uh, the, the longest voices here. They have the greatest presence. Uh, Luke, um, yes, we love Luke. What are we looking at here? Obviously, this image. It's clearly a wedding, right? And, and so there is the motif for that. And they look very happy. They look like this is their moment. Uh, next, please. And this is not an unusual thing to see a bride being escorted down an aisle, right? This would not shock any of you if you were to see this. We would almost expect this in a certain sense. And she is euphoric. Look at her. She is thrilled. And, and how about the man there who's extended his arm? He looks very joyful, too. We can't see their hearts, but we know their hearts are happy. Now, who is this? This is Jenny Stepien, that's Arthur Thomas, and that's Paul. And they're at St. Anselm Church in Swiss Hill, Pennsylvania, just a few years ago on the 6th of August. And uh, there is Arthur joining their hands together there. And it's quite a moment. Maybe this is familiar. Maybe you've seen this. Maybe you were one of these actors at one point in your life. Next, please. Well, here's the Paul Harvey moment. Here's the rest of the story. Next, please. Jenny Stepien's natural father was killed in a robbery years before her wedding. So that clearly is not her father. Her father is gone. Next. She asked the man who received her father's heart to walk her down the aisle. And when the Gaspar Audible friends, we know we're looking at something not only holy, which is another word for healthy, but beautiful and full of hope, steeped in faith and love. Next, please. Jenny touched Arthur's wrist and his chest. Next, please. He said, I thought that would be the best way for her to feel close to her dad. Next. That's her father's heart beating. So when we think of heart friends, see how notions of this then can uh, be available to us when we most need it, right? This is why we look at works of art. So our lives become works of art. So we can rely on that heart when we most need it. How incredibly generous of him to come here. And what an exquisite invitation to be made. Next, please. Who's she dancing with? She's dancing with Dad in the body of Arthur. But there is, there's Papa. There's Dad. This is what we can celebrate on a day like Valentine's Day. Uh, if we have an imagination that's bold and broad and full of uh, anything that can be possible. Next, please. That's dad, that's dad, and that's little Jenny right there, and she will grow up to become this woman. And that heart is here. Stunningly generous, 
incredibly, and out of the sense of profound gratitude, I am sure, right? I am sure for that. Uh, next. Right? You think her heart is racing? Her heart is full of joy that day. I'm sure she misses her father, but she knows dad is right there in so many ways. Ah, I need a Kleenex, friends. This is a hard one. Uh, next, please. And this is what I have for my friends uh, today, uh, a consideration of, of the heart, uh, where we've seen it, where we might imagine it to be, and how our hearts um, really are, are, are so vibrant and full of possibility yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It's always a joy to be here. You've got my heart at the UU Fellowship here. Thank you so much. <laughs> Questions and comments? Naturally, but of course. Yes, sir. Jim. Oh, my buddy Jim. <laughs> yes, sir. Everybody wants to be part of Banksy's energy, and so there are other artists that will come out there and enrich that. Sometimes they will actually obliterate.